Well, let's start with this. What type of functional group is this? Uh, ketone. Ketone. Let's first remind ourselves Let's first remind ourselves, what happens when a Grignard attacks a ketone? I'm going to describe that in words. Do you know what happens when a Grignard attacks a ketone? Um, it's really reactive, so we don't need any catalyst. Mm -hmm. um, that carbon chain right there is essentially a CH3, CH2, CH2 minus, and the MGBR has a plus. Right. And you just put in that. No. Right. Well, I, we should actually draw this. So let's draw what's going to happen. That sounds like you're on the right track. It's good that you saw that it's best to draw the Grignard as ionic. No sweat. Although if this was a mechanism problem, you wouldn't get credit unless you showed the electron pushing arrows. We have to actually show how the hydronium protonates the oxygen. If you're really comfortable with that, you can leave that out within your own in your own practice if it's getting boring, but you gotta remember to put that in on the test. It's good that you used numbering here to make sure that you knew not you were not adding or dropping carbons, and it looked like you asked just the carbonyl carbon. That's a good idea. Good. What type of functional group did we end up with? It's still a heat. No, it's not. Um. Just an OH group on an alkane carbon. That's an alcohol? Oh, yeah. Alcohol. This is what we get when we have a Grignard that attacks an aldehyde or a ketone. You get an alcohol. This is one of the reactions we talked about last time. This is what we call a category one reaction because the Grignard just attacks once, and that's the end of the story. Grignard just attacks once. The carbonyl oxygen does not get kicked off. The Grignard attacks once, and the carbonyl oxygen stays around. What would the product have been if we hadn't added the hydronium? We'd have... Point to what the product would be if we didn't have the hydronium. That's right. Until we add the hydronium, there's nothing to protonate this oxygen here. And you cannot add the hydronium together with the Grignard, because we learned last semester that uh, hydronium destroys Grignards, so we have to add these separately. Well, looks like you're comfortable with this. Good. Now let's see how this applies to esters. Well, let's see if we can show a reasonable mechanism here. That's it.
You were doing good. You had some problems with that last step. Now, this first step makes sense. We have a nucleophile here, and we know that carbonyl carbons are electrophilic. By the way, we should have reminded ourselves, why are carbonyl carbons electrophilic? The oxygen is electronegative, and it's pulling electrons away. That's right. So the last step in that chain of logic is, because of that, we have a delta positive charge on this carbon. It's good to put in that last step. It's the delta positive that makes this electrophilic. But you're right, the reason this is delta positive is because the oxygen is drawing the electrons away. But it's good to take that last step and see the carbonyl carbon here is delta positive. Now, at this point, remember that when possible, we'd like to reform the carbonyl, but only if there is an allowable leaving group. Well, we know that all of these have allowable leaving groups. These are all allowable. They're not great leaving groups sometimes, but they're all allowable. So we can use this as the leaving group. We're certainly not going to protonate it first because we don't have any acid yet. So it's just going to have to leave. Now here's where we have started to get a couple of problems. Who is attached to the carbonyl carbon? carbon? Which carbon? Number one, right? Mm -hmm. But in your picture, the number one carbon is not attached to the carbonyl carbon. I think you accidentally added a carbon. This carbon appeared from nowhere. That shouldn't be here. This picture was right. This picture was right. The number one should be attached to the carbonyl carbon. You might have gotten this right if you kept asterisking the carbonyl carbon. If you keep asterisking the carbonyl carbon, it's plainer that the carbonyl is attached to the number one. And then it's not as tempting to insert in a superfluous carbon. Anytime we're making a longer carbon chain, we have to be very careful not to add or drop carbons. Now, I think you had another mistake, which is that you drew this as HOME, mm -hmm. but there's nowhere for the hydrogen to come from yet. So at this point, this should still be negative oxygen. After all, when this leaves, it doesn't have any hydrogens, right? So this should just be a negative OME. So these are the products from this step. Remember, we have not added the hydronium yet. We have to wait to add the hydronium until the Grignard is done because the hydronium would destroy the Grignard. That's what these numbers mean. This is a completely separate step. So there's no sources of protons yet here to attach to this. OK. Ah, and then there's another difficulty, which is this is not the end. Because what type of functional group is this? But we were just reviewing that Grignards also attack ketones. So now we have to do this all over again. But now we need to have, we should assume that we have as much Grignard as we need. The assumption here is we have as much Grignard as we need. So now the Grignard is going to attack the ketone. And again, this is happening before we add the hydronium. We're going to wait for the Grignard to completely finish doing what it wants to do before we add any hydronium. Good. Good. Only now have we done everything we can with the Grignards, and only now can we do what you did and now bring in the hydronium to do the protonation. By the way, at this point, we probably don't care what happens to this methoxide. But if we did show what happened to the methoxide, now we could show the methoxide having been protonated. If we cared about this, we can now show it's protonated from the hydronium. But we can't show it's protonated until the hydronium shows up. That's maybe a technicality. Now you can see why, even though your question to me was about esters, you can see why first we had to review how Grignards attack ketones. Because when a Grignard attacks an ester, the first thing you get is a ketone. But then the Grignard attacks again, because Grignards can also attack ketones. So this is a case where we're going to get two attacks. This is different from all these other reactions we saw before. We've been talking about the wild card reactions where we go from one place to another in the table, but those just happened once, and then they stopped. 
But when a Grignard attacks one of these things, it can attack twice, because the first thing it makes is a ketone, but Grignards like attacking ketones too, so we have to have that highlighted in our notes. An uh, attack by a Grignard goes twice. What type of functional group is this? Alcohol. So we ended up with an alcohol here, because we already saw that when a Grignard attacks a ketone, we get an alcohol, and now we see when a Grignard attacks an ester, first we get a ketone, and then it turns into an alcohol. 